What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Christopher Stolly Show podcast. I am joined by one of my Breaking the Fourth Wall alums, Miss Serenity Stone. Hello. And from Telling It Like It Is and a uh, whole bunch of other places, too. And he's, he's getting around. He's too big for us now, but we actually roped him in because of contractual obligations. Mr. Christopher Rudder. Hey, man. How's it going? How's it going? Told you my told you my lawyer was good, not good enough to beat my ex wife in the divorce, but he's good. (laughs) You know, family law and uh, uh... contractual law. Contractual law. Two two different things. Well, it's funny. I think it's it's the law of brotherhood. (laughs) Well, it's funny you say contractual law because that almost slips segues perfectly into the topic of conversation. But before we do. I want to take a moment for a, a personal note. I, I know he listens to the show because his daughter told me he listens to the show sometimes. Uh, so I just I just want to uh, send out a uh, very, very heartfelt get well soon to Ken. Uh, I won't go into more detail than that because, you know, personals and everything else. But, you know, we're, we're here at Breaking the Fourth Wall. We're all pulling for you. So uh, get well soon, Ken. All right. For sure. Topic of conversation. I know this is one Serenity wanted to get into. She was she was digging into it like all week for it, and that is the <laughs> whole entire battle in Florida between the uh, Mouse Overlord and the uh, Second Coming of the White Supremacist Donald Trump, Mister Ron DeSantis. That's not my beliefs. That's everybody else's beliefs. Ron DeSantis is the White Devil. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this whole entire battle over the wokeism bullshit, which started with the whole entire don't say gay bill, which, by the way, nowhere in the bill says don't say gay. Anybody who says otherwise, stop reading the headline, start reading the article. Um, <clears throat> and Disney just read the bill. It's it's only uh, nine pages in length. It's actually a very short written bill. Yeah, uh, it's not hard reading. I promise you. Man, and it's also not a hard concept. Nobody's saying that you can't teach, you know, uh, consenting adults or, or even teenagers or even preteens when they start getting into human sexuality and development cl- courses. You can't, nobody's saying you can't teach them about homosexuality or that you can't teach them about transgenderism. Uh, what the bill is actually blocking is programming and grooming children from kindergarten to to. I don't know, fifth grade, for example, basically children who are too young to be exposed to that in any form, whether it's hetero, gay, trans or other or other. They're just too young. Don't teach it to them. They don't need to know. And as a parent, I 120,000 percent agree with that bill. I think if you're still working on head, shoulders, knees, and toes, you shouldn't involve any other parts of the body. Yeah, know? penis and vagina is not part of head, shoulders, knees, and toes. It should well, be, though, because that is part of the body. <laughs> <laughs> Very important part, but not You know, but, I mean, there, there, is, there is a point of no return that once you open that door, what have you exposed this very young, most influential mind um, and predisposing them? to some sort of a thought process that makes them think that, you know, well, maybe I should be that way instead of actually finding out the whole gay rights movement that I grew up with during the late seventies and eighties and, and, and all of that is coming out of the closet and discussing what you've always been and what you naturally are, Mm -hmm. but teaching somebody in a way to make them feel again, predisposed to, you know, maybe I should do that because, you know, on this Disney show or from this teacher, they make it sound like everyday conversation when it is uh, 
definitely not every day or dinner table conversation. Once you go beyond that dinner table conversation with a five-year-old, you're talking about something that should truly be between mom and dad and that child. Well, you're right, and I I, I want to touch point on that. Uh, we we all when we all went to school, and I know we're we're varying ages, but when we all went to school and you wound up in human sexuality courses. It was very generalized. It's not like they put on a porno with Tracy Lords and said, "Okay, that's where a penis actually is supposed to go." You know, they, you know, it was very generalized conversation about, you know, puberty and how your body changes, what it means when a man gets an erection or when a woman becomes, forgive me, I know a lot of people cringe at this word, but moist. You know, and how reproduction and, and how reproduction occurs, like what happens when you try to reproduce. And that's generally it. Safe sex, like the safe sex practices within there. In, in my time, in my time, it was only the it was only the discussion of the anatomy, and and then all everything went towards safe sex. Yeah, but it but but as far as far as sexuality, it was it was the functionality as opposed to the feelings of. Right. Yeah, you know, that that that's my, my point. Day, there was no discussion of sexuality. It was just you know abstain. And here's what happened if you don't wear a rubber. Uh, you guys went through a, a little bit more of an enlightened period, but nothing near as progressive or damaging as what they're trying to do now in Florida and California. Well, that that's where I was going with it. If they continued on that aspect with adding in the homosexuality or transgender sexuality, where they just gave it as like cliff notes or or the mechanics of if you will and i'm doing air quotations for people that obviously can't see me you know the mechanics of i'd be fine with it but yeah i agree with chris 100 percent, and i've stated it on your show your show the last time i was on uh that when it comes down to the actual discussions of sexuality with a child and and what their feelings are and whether they're gay straight or other that is the responsible responsibility solely and only of the parents yeah, well, I, I remember my parents had to sign a slip for me to take sex education, and before he would even sign the slip, my dad, a doctor, you know, told me all about everything, just so I didn't get. Did the he go idea full, full? Did he go full board birds and bees with you, or? Um, he basically was the best sex, sex education teacher in thirty minutes. I mean, he. Or less. Here's like a sex pizza. This is what your body looks like. This is what his looks like. This is what it does. This is what it's supposed to do. And then, hey, you'd have a baby. So put a condom on, do this, do that. And that was the end of it. And that's all okay. I really learned from sex ed. Because in, in my day, and this is, again, showing a little bit of age difference between all of us, sex ed um, um, was basically, at that point in time, a replacement for the birds and the bees talk. Now you got to remember growing up during the cold war era, like I did in the seventies and eighties, uh, we were very, uh, the United States was very repressed whenever it come to any sexual, any window or talking or, you know, anything like that. So sex ed, whenever I was in grade in middle school, uh, was a relief to most parents because they thought that that was, the teacher filling their shoes to not have to have that uncomfortable talk, yeah. which is the way it was considered 40 years ago. Which which made sense in that era, too, because, again, I'm not too far behind. And, and being a person who grew up without a father because my dad passed away, it's not a, it's not one of those soft stories of he went for cigarettes and I haven't seen him since. Um, you know, I, and, and my mother... Sure? I'm not really, no, I'm not. Um, but, you know, my mother... And Serenity, you know my mother. Uh, <laughs> could you imagine her trying to sit me down for the birds and bees talk? No. Like, oh like human human sexuality cor sexuality courses probably were the best benefit for me. Although I did have a grandfather who literally sat me down with a porno and said, "There you go." Uh, <laughs> There's that, and then also imagine um, the disconnect between us and any listeners who may be. 15 or 20 years behind imagine how archaic the birds and bees talk okay. sounds to them right well especially because a lot of things have changed uh, you know and and they've continued to change and evolve even though like there were like you said in the 70s and 80s 
even though the 80s were kind of the raunchy uh, decade of decadence musically, which brought a lot of sexuality to the forefront. MT- MTV was our, our sexual instruction more than any fucking thing else. I Especially that White Snake video with the girl on the car. Don't <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> but. <laughs> and I'm kind of like in between. Well, no, I think I'm the youngest of all of us. Okay. So, yeah, you are. Um, the other day I watched a show on Netflix called The Principles of Pleasure, and it's about like women being more in tune with them sex with their sexual self or whatever. And I learned more in the 20 minutes of that I watched than I did in sex ed. I mean, we we seriously. talked about that a couple of weeks ago. You asked me if I'd watched that show and. And it, it's funny how that whenever they're describing this this change or this sexual revolution with, with, with women, especially American women, that it seems like they're more sexually aggressive other than sexually aware. Isn't that kind of the point of that whole show? Yeah, well... I would kind of agree with that. aggressive with themselves. I mean, like, mm-hmm. I, on, yeah. like... Be nice to yourself, love yourself, but don't beat yourself, okay? Well, guys yeah. beat themselves. That's a... <laughs> yeah, it's, it's two different points of view on that one, yeah. No, but I, I would actually, I would actually kind of agree with that. The modern woman, from from my standpoint and, and perspective, and, and we're completely off topic of what we're supposed to be talking, by the way, but we'll we'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> just like just, consider this foreplay. Um... <laughs> we'll get there someday next week. Someday yeah, somewhere. But uh, no, I I would I would agree. I would I would think I would think women are more sexually attuned, and I would even more say sexually mature than than men in 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 most aspects. Because yeah, I mean, they're the ones that usually are better at abstaining. They're usually the ones that are better at uh, not self pleasuring just for the sake of self pleasuring. I mean, men will whip it out and beat it at pretty much any point. So I would I would almost agree with that standpoint that I I would think women more are more in tune sexually for themselves than than men are. Well, I think the the, the real difference between generations here and and you're dealing with the difference between the tail end of millennials to Gen Xers and uh, as I'm referred to on online, especially on fucking Twitter anymore as a boomer. Uh-huh. And, uh, whatever. <laughs> whatever, whatever. <laughs> I'm Gen X, baby. I can laugh at you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, I, and I'm a Gen Xer too, but I'm still because I'm 50 plus. I get referred to as a boomer in some conversations. But um, you know, I, I think that the the awareness has changed to a point where it's where it's comfortable to be talked about. Whereas back in the day, it was like a two page article in Cosmopolitan. And the most guys knew about it is maybe penthouse stories. And now it's more of an upfront, open conversation. And uh, women are allowed to be much more aware than they used to be, which is a great thing whenever you're dealing with somebody who's an adult, which brings us back to what we're getting ready to talk about. I will say this much, though, with the argue with the rape culture argument. I do have to throw a little controversy in there. I'm sorry, but with the rape culture argument, yes, I do agree that women have the right to dress how they want to dress or act how they want to act. I will not say they don't have the right. But what I am going to say is that, that, you know, the teaching men not to rape, most of us already know that. I think the argument needs to be not only that men are raised right, which most of us are, but women have to accept the responsibility that if you decide to live a risque lifestyle, risque things may occur. Okay. Well, you know, no, the, the totally, funny... Let me finish this off by saying yeah, go ahead. women have the right to an orgasm. Okay? Not faking shit. Not just like, okay, I'm wet. Did you feel that? No. Like, women have the right to come. Actually, I'll agree with you on that, and I'll go a step further, especially with the fake orgasm. Women who bitch that men don't get them off or or that they have to fake an orgasm. Do you ever think that maybe instead of pretending like they're a god when they're a a, a dud, that you could, you know, be that air traffic controller out on the runway and wave them this way and wave them that way and actually teach them what gets you off? You might have a happier and healthier sex life. Just saying. that comes that comes i think with a more mature relationship yeah. which again is going to bring us back to our, our our talking point on this right but one of the one of the biggest 
signs of the change of the times that I could point you to. And, and this is unfortunate that I'm going to use this in this context. But if you were to log into Pornhub right now, you want to know what the number one sexual toys you're going to see are going to be all about? Uh, step siblings. No, not the fucking videos. The oh. toys. I don't know. I don't go on Pornhub. I don't know what the fuck they do. I just remember you mentioning about step sibling I, videos I at one point. Guess, just guess. Use a sex toy that you know and guess. It's for women. All of the sex toy ads are for women. They have all of these different variations. Well, have you seen toys? sex toys for men? It's fucking horrifying. Okay, but... <laughs> just listen to me. That means to me that it's not just men signing on Pornhub... It's it women means there's too. women also. There's yes. been, that's the enlightenment that I'm talking about. Okay, Serenity, how often do you sign into a sex site or, or porn site? Well, Be honest. Go into that, but it's, I, it's more often than what most people would want to admit or talk about. Way I will more. be completely honest with you. I, I, I never actually have, but I've seen some pretty fucking raunchy shit to make me not want to. And... Two girls, one you cup. What the fuck I'm talking about? Two girls, one May. cup. May. <laughs> you know, it, whatever you're talking about, like really fucking super aggressive, off the wall, fucking one percent shit, like uh, bestiality and and crazy fucking shit like that. Then that's a whole different degradation. That's a, again going to a point of degrading women. But whenever you look at the average content on something like on something like that, then you're gonna find that it's as much geared towards women now as it is towards men, unless you look at very fucked up situations and, and scene topics. But the advertisers you'll see on that, even if you just go to just something that the average couple might look at, like Adam and Eve, the whole first 20 pages out of, out of 25 is going to be all toys for her. Yep. Well, again, it's also because of the fact that the girls' toys, you know, I'm not a girl, I'm not interested in... in using girls sexual toys but let's be honest if you look at the girls toys they look fun and slightly realistic men's stuff look like out of fucking nightmares like you have disembodied butts and and fucking a, a flashlight with a vagina in it i mean it, it's men's sex toys suck <laughs> well i think you were born with two of them and women it takes something different and a different procedure that they need our, tools. <laughs> I don't know well, ours, is, ours is much more readily available than a woman. It takes more expo ex exploration, you know, to be able to find what works and what doesn't. But the fact that over the past 10 or 15 years, this has become such a commonplace, both advertisement and vertical space, it, it's a billion dollar industry. Sex mm -hmm. toys are. Well, sex and sells. Sex more, always sold. You know, and, and of course, sex is always sold, but it's always been primarily geared towards men by videos. Now it's not by videos. You can look up anything for fucking free. That has nothing to do with the sales of sex. The sales of sex, the billion dollar industry, 75% of it is geared towards women. Yep. You remember pleasures here in Colorado, Dolly? Yeah, I remember. I, I remember I worked for him for about four hours. I used to have to clean. I, I, I used to have to clean the arcades. I know. That's disgusting. Well, that's, that's a very unfortunate. Money he had? Some so, a, somebody while I was trying to clean one of the uh, one of the arcades, somebody decided to send me a present through the uh, glory hole. I hung a fucking bleach bucket on it and walked out and never came back. Well, hey, at least he's at least he was able to fucking hold up a goddamn bucket. <laughs> <laughs> Could chip marble with that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, it's different things for everybody, but the fact that this is more of an open discussion, and, and we're talking the difference between men and women, but notice how none of us who are um, inclined in any way, shape, or form to talk about alternate sex or, you know, bisex or gay sex or anything like that, that's not coming up in this healthy discussion of what the current terms and current sales of things are. That shows you how much of an outlier what we're getting ready to talk about actually is whenever you're introducing it to children. 
Well, uh, let me let me preface it that uh, with the transition, just because of the segue, we've been talking about sex toys and and open sexuality and sexual experiences and hanging buckets off of fucking penises and everything else. I I feel like I have to preface it this very simply with we here at Breaking the Fourth Wall Entertainment and specifically at the Christopher Stolle Show, as well as I feel comfortable enough in saying that uh, I can speak for also uh, telling it like it is. We do not in any way, shape, form, or in any alternate universe belief uh, ever support or condone pedophilia. And with that, and with that, let's talk about Disney. That's a, that's a hell of a segue, right? Uh, To be able to bring us into this conversation, which is the, um, the language that's been promoted and used within the press on that you can't say gay bill or don't say gay bill as it's been uh, used over and over again, doesn't have anything to do with the actual language of the bill. The reason that this bill has come about is because of multiple reports. One of them I'm getting ready to play. I played it before on the Tell Me Like It Is show. I want to play it for the for the listeners of uh, the Christopher Stoley po- podcast, just so you can see where we're about to go with this entire conversation. We're not talking about enlightenment. We're not talking about uh, yeah, it, you know, that not predication or uh, sexual freedom to do as you choose. We're talking about the indoctrination of children mm-hmm. to make this look in a very particular way. We're not talking about being members of the Mickey Mouse Club. That's a totally different thing. We're talking about a corporate agenda mm-hmm. that has been uncovered and shown through multiple reports. Chris, tell me when you want me to roll it. Roll it. We'll discuss it after the rolling. This is the last time I'm hosting these awards, so I don't care anymore. The tongue lashing the room full of self-righteous, complacent narcissists received at the Golden Globes resulted in an aftermath that says it all. He said everything he ever wanted to say to that self-obsessed pile of pulsating flesh known as Hollywood. It must have been his last time hosting. He's like, I'm just going to put it all out there. And it was hilarious. A lot of people were like, oh, I don't know if I should laugh. I'm right cringe, <laughs> but I found it. I found it funny. I was like, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Ricky Gervais was fantastic as the host. I mean, he's just... He's he's a great. Great. Aside from the anger in the leftist Mockingbird media, everyone joyfully celebrated Ricky Gervais's smackdown of celebrities, targeting their constant grandstanding based on their plastic privilege. Apple rolled into the, the TV game with a morning show, a superb drama about the importance of dignity and doing the right thing made by a company that runs sweatshops in China. So, well, you say you're woke, but the companies you work for, I mean, unbelievable. Apple, Amazon, Disney. If ISIS started a streaming service, you'd call your agent, wouldn't you? So if you do win an award tonight, don't use it as a a platform to make a political speech, right? You're in no position to lecture the public about anything. You know nothing about the real world. Most of you spent less time in school than Greta Thunberg. So if you win, right? (laughs) Come up, accept your little award, thank your agent and your god, and, and fuck off. Yeah, no, fuck off. He obviously didn't kill himself, just like Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> Shut up. I know he's your friend, but I don't care. Because we all know beyond the Weinstein casting couch and Epstein's Lolita Express lie unspeakable acts that tear at the fabric of American providence. Hollywood's secret days of sexually preying on children have gone from conspiracy to horrible truth in 2020. If you read the book, you'll be like, oh, transitioning from Disney to this was f-ing easy. I don't know, getting molested for f-ing from your 6 to your 14 seems like way harder circumstances are being physically abused all the time the type of mistreatment that I was still dealing with at that time that everyone around me saw and did nothing Disney has cornered the market on all things catering to America's youth 
Among the Disney industrial entertainment complex are untouchable filth like Guardians of the Galaxy director James Gunn, who nearly derailed his movie franchise with a barrage of pedophilic tweets. But the outrage concerning Disney's open secret is bubbling to the surface. This, this started um, Ricky being around all of these people a lot. He was around... Yeah, he, he was around all these people that are now known, you know... In this pedophile ring of child molesters, he was around them regularly. Disney child star Ricky Garcia filed a lawsuit in Los Angeles Superior Court in which they named Ricky Garcia's ex-manager, Joby Hart, 37, Joby's Hot Rocks media business partners, Paul Cohen and Sherry Anderson Thomas, talent agency APA, former APA agent Tyler Grasham, and manager Nils Larson, currently employed by Management 360, a which is a Disney company. Alleging that from the age of 12 years old, Ricky was groomed, sexually abused, and raped on a weekly basis. Jesus and that Joby Christ. Hart passed him around as a sexual plaything to other powerful pedophiles throughout the business. Relating a typical day in her son's life, Tammy Garcia explained, This was a Disney party after a Disney concert filled with underage Disney stars being plied with alcohol openly where child molestation was going on, open, brazen, all under the watchful, knowing eye of Disney employees. And none of it seemed to be a problem, as no consequences resulted. No one, it seems, was looking out for or concerned about the safety and well-being of the kids in the slightest way. This is the Hollywood that Gervais was spraying venom on. Talking of all you perverts, it was a big year for pedophile movies. Um, surviving R. Kelly... Leaving Neverland, two popes. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> there's, a, there's a still of, St of Spielberg sitting there going, God damn. <laughs> and no one seemed to have any problem with giving minors copious amounts of alcohol. No, because, I mean, that, now, I mean, looking back, that, that's regular. That, that's, that's what goes on in Hollywood. These agents of child trafficking that simultaneously brainwashed the future generations of America are not untouchable. If there's to be a revolution that restores our American values, it must begin in the tiny hamlet of hell known as Hollywood. John Bound reporting. I did a lot of digging to be able to come up with this report because it's different than the last one that we covered going into the uh, Disney accusations and the can't say gay uh but um whenever you're dealing with all of this the ricky gervais exit from the golden globes and everything began everybody looking at uh incidents like pizzagate and uh, all of the allegations of the washington dc pedophilia rings that are going on and then also leading directly to disney and uh the 50-year tradition of this going on and that's what brings us to the don't say gay bill, which is going on in Florida, making DeSantis to look like um, basically the media is portraying him as the second coming of Hitler, uh, another white supremacist, um, because he doesn't want children to be taught and treated this way. Well, before we before we really dig into this, I, I, it's something that confuses me. It really does. And maybe it's because I don't have the cross wiring, but I really do not get this sexual attraction towards children. Like, you know, I'm going to speak frankly here. I've seen children where you could tell they're going to grow up to be very beautiful adults. You know what I mean? And I can look at a child and go, wow, she, she or he is very handsome or very pretty. I could see them in 20 years being absolutely drop dead gorgeous and full stop. Never once in that thought process of looking at that child, it's like, gee, I wonder what they look like naked and uh, how well they, you know, I'm not going to finish that statement because it's so, too gross to even come from my mouth. Okay. So, like, let's say that it was 400 years ago. Right. The average marrying age was 13. There? Yeah, 13. Yeah, I get that. Okay. Yeah, you would, you would have married somebody who was 12. <clears throat> different, right. different yeah, world, different right. standards. But I mean, a lot of, a lot of this. Sorry, go ahead. Also, a life expectancy of 42. Right. You had the life expectancy of 42, and also with a lot of this pedophilia. 
we're we're talking about in today's society we're talking about a lot younger than 12. oh okay we are but i'm just saying that like times have changed and it used to be acceptable up to a certain age i don't i don't know if 90 percent 50 percent or maybe it's only one percent of people have some wire crossed in their brain where they think that that isn't just a child or a baby can, or something. I mean, like, can we, there can has we to be our, something crossed. Right. Yes, there definitely is. And, and for that, can we put on our tinfoil hats for a moment? Sure, go ahead. Yes. I'm sorry, is there, there supposed there to be is. a sound effect for the, the tinfoil? I'll, no, I'll remember no, that for no. next show. <laughs> I wish there was. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, Serenity knows what I mean whenever I say put on our tinfoil hats. I'm not speaking directly to, uh, but I am going to speak in the abstract of this. Whenever you're dealing with the components of what's going on in the in the world right now, whenever you're dealing with the villains that are about us right now, people like Klaus Schwab, people like George Soros, people like it that are involved in the NWO and its arms and tentacles thereof. Okay. Okay. There is, there is a very big power vacuum in the blood, soul, and sacrifice of children. It's written in their white papers. It's written in their books. Rothschild yep. spoke about it. Henry Ford spoke about it. FDR spoke about it. George Soros has spoken about it. Klaus Schwab has spoken about it. All of the graduates of the New Young World Leaders development group and the many different variations of the names that they have used over the past 20 years they keep changing the name of the group so that way they can hide the constituents or the actual graduates of these programs people like justin trudeau people like newsom people like what it comes Therese. down to is the sacrifice of innocence is this That's exactly power. what it is the blood this is the uh Andrecombe society uh where we uh we want to ingest this the sacrifice thereof of these young bodies, these innocents, where we can spoil it and we can stain it and tarnish it. This is a display of power. Is it, are we, uh, forgive my ignorance, but are we basically talking like Illuminati type shit? Fuck that. Uh, Illuminati are nice. Don't talk shit. I'm asking. I'm not <laughs> tick. <laughs> 20, 20 years ago, the version of what we considered. The Illuminati is the real world, world version of what the New World Order, what Bohemian Grove, what Rome Club, um, and very various other institutes uh, that all have tentacles reaching over to Klaus Schwab, to the WEF, to the UN, and to George Soros, to the Clintons. This is like Bohemian Grove shit. This isn't like... You, you know, Mark, Mark Twain was a member of the original Bohemian Grove, and he wrote later that it's much too queer for me. It's a fun place, but it's too queer for me. And he wrote that in 1893. I think that... that's that's how long this has been around, guys. And it is it's uh, been around since the Aztecs. It's been a, well. I mean, it, Egyptian, you could go back that far with Roman. it, but as far as like current vernacular, Bohemian Grove is something that is still going on. So that's the Very most recent so. historic thing that can actually be looked at and shown. And 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 this is very much a part of their culture. Whenever so do you you're think dealing... the sacrifice of the child or the sacrifice of the lamb or innocence or whatever you want to call it, does that have any religious background? Like, to, do they... Mm -hmm. Oh, it's written like about in Old Testament. Well, that that that's why that's why I asked about Illuminati. Was for yeah. its religious or cultish type type. Well, it, the only the only reason I draw a line there and I say not Illuminati is because the Illuminati's major inception and conception, uh, as long as uh, also being uh, uh, part of the the Masonic uh, history of things, is that they were looking to overthrow these parts of the government that they disagreed with. That's what the Illuminati was about, was to overthrow the priest who fucking molest kids. Yeah. That's the reason the Illuminati was suck out, uh, was was sought out and destroyed. Okay? They're because about, they looked to expose that. 
Yeah, they're about good faith and people and all men and should have women and whatever in there. I mean, they got they got some fucked up shit. They got some sexual, you know, uh, 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 traditions that they do. They have some um, domination kind of things that they do and all of this stuff. That's like thirty third and thirty fifth level. That's not like (laughs) like you know, whenever you're dealing with (coughs) you have to grind to get to that level. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, you got to really fucking get to Benjamin Franklin status to get there. But Benjamin Franklin was uh, very bohemian as well. Um, he, he was a sexual deviant by that that times. Um, well, that was blatantly uh, the way that known. they looked at things. He he was. It's very well known. It's very written about uh, that he was uh, a, a huge sexual deviant. Uh, that he dealt with uh, multiple female discharges. He was also. Uh, um, bisexual. He, he uh, don't, uh, participated in orgies and, and all of this stuff, right? That's, that's different than abducting and fucking kids. <sighs> you know, just those words shouldn't be part of vocabulary. Like, the fact that we're even sitting here and talking about this as a mom and as a human, I'm fucking pissed. Like, life is not something anyone should take and if they take it then the same should be taken of them and the during, fact that they're doing it to innocence i mean and, and here's something to consider during the during the beginning of the uh covid pandemic in uh june and july of 2020 there was a roundup in just ohio this is just ohio there was a roundup in ohio uh, 43 people reaching all the way to their state seats of a child abduction and sex ring. Now, see how easy that is to fucking pull up on your fucking Facebook reports or your Twitter reports. See how much that was actually covered up. That's just Ohio. Well, I mean, I mean, it, it, big businesses in sex trafficking, and I mean that that's part of that's part of today's political hot topics, like with the border crisis and shit like that. You know, the the, the uh, sex trafficking is is dangerously higher than it's ever been in its life. But you know what they don't talk about is that we're not talking about like sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen year old girls. We are talking about like prepubescent boys and girls as well. There's a huge ring in sex trafficking for pedophilia. Yes. Yeah. And and it was discussed uh, <coughs> uh with with both the Clintons and Bush and Obama. Um, all leading up to the Pizzagate sta- uh, scandal and everything, which um, uh, a lot of that ended up being hearsay, but there was a lot of FBI factual reports, uh, phone calls that were made. I've got these special walnuts. They float really well in the hot tub, talking about young black boys. I've got, I've got 43 hot dogs ready to go. These are an FBI yep. fucking correspondence, okay? They're talking about president though. Was that Obama? That was Obama during the hot dog conversation. And it was Clinton. Whenever we were talking about walnuts, talking about young black boys, this is known pedophilia code that the FBI has written about. You could go and look up FBI reports, looking at code phrases used by major pedophile rings. You'll see walnuts referring to black boys. You'll see hot dogs. Refer, referring to pre-adolescent white boys. Uh, you'll see Twinkies being referred to as young pre-adolescent girls. All of these codes are used multiple times and in reference and with actual emails of presidents to other agencies. And this goes all the way back to Clinton. And that's just because that's when fucking that email that's yeah. just when email started. Okay? Yeah. That's the reason there's a digital sc- transcript of that <laughs> before right. you can imagine what there could have been. Okay, so we all know that the world has some corrupt people, but the fact that the corrupt people are so easily hidden while things are breaking down and people are getting busted, we only hear about <sighs> Jeffrey Epstein and that other guy that killed himself that was with Epstein and the Grishine or Griselle or whatever Maxwell, her name is. yes. Yeah. yeah, that chick, how she wants out, and she's scared because the other two guys. You know, it's it's really it's suicide. really funny. It's really funny how the same media bases and the same media power brokers 
or more than comfortable to completely uh, stream everything that's going on with Jan uh, with uh, Johnny Depp and Amber Turd, uh, <laughs> but they hid everything from you about Gisley Maxwell and her clients list. You know what though? Same, you know what though? On, on the opposite end of the coin, I'm kind of a I'm kind of on the fence with the whole Johnny Depp thing. You're right that that we're paying more attention to the Johnny Depp Amber Turd thing than than you know what's going on in the real world. However, on the opposite end of the coin, I'm glad Johnny Depp is and Amber Heard are getting uh, airtime because well, it's is, bringing to light the fact that men suffer from domestic violence as well. This is the pendulum swinging for me too. There's always a overcorrection. <laughs> within society this is just that pendulum swinging from me to to showing and and shining a light on the fact that it does happen to men too that's why yep. will smith and johnny depp are part of the past 45 day news cycle and we haven't heard anything about any me too advocates for the past year and a half this you is know, just a pendulum say, swinging. i watch like a president Biden doing a speech in America and it has like four to six hundred, maybe a little bit above six hundred views at a time. And then I uh -huh. click on fucking Johnny Depp. And it's got three million. One thousand, yeah, like no, just locally, like one thousand eight hundred or something. And this could be at intermission. And there's still <clears> almost <throat> two thousand fucking people watching it. But we can't even get a thousand people to fucking watch the presidential fucking address or something like. Well, it's like whenever he did the town hall meeting in Columbus, Ohio, uh, they only were able to get 380 people into the theater, and they kept showing it like it was a packed house of 5,000. But there was only remember, 380 people there. This was during COVID, so they were very lucky to get that 300 and some odd people in there because. Yeah, you can't have more than that if they're six feet apart with 15 masks on. People. Yeah, but everybody right. was sitting shoulder to shoulder during uh, on all the camera views of that town hall I'm, meeting. I'm just saying, and not that wearing a mask. But <laughs> everyone I spoke to, when I brought that up to them during all these debates, they would say, "Well, because of pandemic, you're only allowed to be outdoors with four people standing 12 feet away." So he was lucky, and that's a lot of people worth giving their lives for this, you know. Like, and at the same thought, time, Trump was having a rally with 200,000 people in Arizona. Oh, yeah, but they, they were saying they were special camera angles and stuff like that, that he didn't have that many people when you could blatantly right. see he did. But they wouldn't say that about Biden. See, right. And, and that's the thing, whenever you're dealing with this media bias, and, and going back to the original topic at hand with Disney and the don't oh, and can't say gay, is that the, the media narrative, whenever it comes to um, major influential groups, okay, Disney is a multi-billion dollar corporation, and they do have lobbyists on Capitol Hill. For anyone who does not know, oh, there are 27 man. registered yeah. lobbyists on Capitol Hill just for Disney, okay? And then you have the 1,500 for Big Pharma. Then you have the 1,200 for tobacco. Then you have the 800 for automotive, not including Tesla. Then you also have uh, the 400 uh, or so that come with uh, all of the military, the military industrial complex uh, coming all the way down from Boeing, uh, all the way down. And then you also have the 30 or 40 representatives who go to Capitol Hill on a daily basis just for NASA funding, which in case everybody has forgotten over the past 21 years has actually been revolutionary and privatized by Elon Musk with SpaceX. Mm -hmm. Yet there are still NASA spokespeople on Capitol Hill and nobody from SpaceX, SpaceX, nobody from SpaceX even goes to the Texas fucking government. <laughs> which is where he's based to. out of right now. Yeah, but they don't need to. Come on. Well, again, going going back to the Disney thing and, and the Ron DeSantis battle with him and the, the, the Nazi gay bill. Uh, again, with, with Disney, with, with what Disney is doing and pushing and narrating, not only through their shows, but through their corporations and through their fucking, uh, you know, double speak and 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 stuff with with changing ladies and gentlemen to uh, everybody or whatever, whatever bullshit they were talking about. All the attendees. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, 
the fact of the matter is I'm going to break it down very succinctly like I did in the green room before we started the show. And I'll, I'll let you guys run off on this uh, from it. Is I do not believe that Disney has the right or, 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 or legal ability to say no to the government of Florida. When did a major corporation get the right to block the rules of the, li- of the land oh. that they are in when it is, especially when those rules of the land are laid down by the voices of the people? Here's the, here's the simple, <clears throat> simple uh, synopsis of that. And then Serenity, go ahead and jump in with your part. Okay. Okay. The, the, difference, the difference here therein lies with DeSantis is Republican and they are in Florida. Whereas Disney World is in California, and Newsom is the government, uh, is the governor there. Notice how these two governors have two completely different battles at hand on the same topic with the same company. Right, but we're concentrating on Florida because uh, obviously yeah, Newsom's Disney allowing World. California to do whatever the fuck they want. But Disney World is in that's Florida. the point. Disneyland is in California, <coughs> and I. I always get them mixed up. Disneyland, yeah, Disney World, whatever. Yeah. That's why I had to help you. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. But okay. whenever you're looking at the two different governors, one has a battle, whereas the other one, nothing is being said. Right, because the other one absolutely agrees with the whole grooming and, and, and child pedophilia, because that's what liberals do. Um, it, and I don't care if I offended a, you, by the way. Yes, liberals he's, he's are that. a graduate of... Uh, uh, the uh, WEF's uh, young world leaders. Right. So We're... Let's not. I want to take it out of the context of whatever we're in now, the integration of the new generation and what their morals might be about te- teaching kids sex and all that. What it really is about with Disney is every single movie going back as far as they were made were either about hating your parents you don't have parents run away from your parents you know don't listen to your parents unrealistic expectations of women and love that's rapunzel like all of them well it's not even about that it's about the independence that you children can have and don't listen to those who say they love you and are gonna supposedly don't listen to the established not. authority? Yeah. Yes. So now with the whole Disney World thing in Florida, what? Okay, so I am a Disney stockholder. So what bothers me about his war on Disney is the fact that Disney is saying, okay, we'll agree with you and we'll integrate all sex, age, creed into our movies and. We've always been on your side. But in the background, DeSantis, who's fighting him, is saying, you're not allowed to be your own township anymore. And that has been around for 55 years. And they cannot disintegrate it unless, one, the amount due is paid, which is almost a billion dollars. Or two, it's been seventy-five years. Well, they could twenty years away. I will disagree with you because the the Santos is laying down a law of the land. The reason he's saying you can't be your own sovereignty anymore is because Disney is refusing to follow the rules of the land of not pushing uh, uh, sexual sexuality upon children or or uh, the pushing of uh, and sneaking in of critical race theory. So here here's the one argument with with that or or against it. Uh, depending on how you want to look at that. The original, okay, uh, Ser- uh, Serenity, correct me if I'm, I'm wrong. In Florida, it's called Disney World. World. Yep. Okay. Whenever they put that in 50 years ago, this original tax exemption and basically their own citizenship and township within the state was put in place because of the tourist attraction standpoint of it. At that point yeah. in time, all of this, while it may have been in place, if you if you look deep into NK Ultra and and all of that, that their films have been part of this from the very beginning. If you if you just okay, let's let's not put on our tinfoil hats for that part of it. Let's just say that they honestly entered into an agreement fifty years ago with Florida that we come here and we're going to become a major tourist destination and in 
1960s dollars, you're going to become a multi-billion dollar a year industry just because of this location. That's the reason the original writing of what they're arguing against is in place. Okay, so what happened was that Florida didn't want to make make its taxpayers pay, pay the money for the, for the right. police, sewage, water, right. fire, any of that that was included. So they allowed them to be their they let, allowed yeah. them to be their own township because of that. They were bringing in so, their yeah, own were, infrastructure. But Florida said you had to be safe. And in order to be safe, there's these 50 things. You have to have water. You have to have hospital. You have to have police. You have to have fire. You have to have any mm. anything that comes up. Trash and, uh, you know, recycling plants, all this. You have to be self-sufficient if you want to And never in a million years ago, uh, never in a million years would they have 50 years ago wrote into that bill or those articles, you can't involve pedophilia. <laughs> right. No. They, <laughs> They would have known about it, but they wouldn't have said the word because I don't right. think it was in the dictionary yet. I don't know. But they Disney is doing what they said they would do, is they would remain self-sufficient. But they're also expanding. They're building a college. They have homes. They have neighborhoods where they have Lori themed towns. Ballos lived. Yeah, yeah they have you themed remember towns. remember the chick who killed her yeah. kids? Well, she yeah. lived there. Mm -hmm. Um <laughs> Like, they are sustaining themselves as their own county or community or country, whatever words you want to put on it, and they are reliant on themselves. And DeSantis is saying, fuck you. You got to get out of this. Which, one, means that then they have to pay for police, then they have to pay for fire. It's going to come out of the taxpayer's money plus the bill that they owe because the bonds are paid like monthly or yearly or right. decadely. So and, and they're uh, correctly speaking up to $1.3 billion in back owed bonds based on the taxes that they haven't supported and supplied for themselves because they've included Florida health on all of it. Yeah. So in order for DeSantis to get his way, it's going to put the taxpayers in debt, probably $1.5, $1.8 million or more. Billion. Oh, sorry. Billion. Yeah. Billion yes. dollars or more. Yeah. So whenever, the, whenever those, whenever those um, bonds become due plus the interest, the 1.2 that's on file obviously has to become one. It's if I owe a thousand dollars on my credit card, I know if I let the interest incur without paying it off, that thousand dollars is now twelve hundred. Yeah, well, right, that's same thing. Exactly. It. Yeah, and people who bought the bonds were kind of like investors or people that supported the cause. So let's say that you bought a bond for a thousand dollars and you wanted to be paid the interest of that bond plus two percent every year then the interest of that bond plus that is your dividend is what you get yes that's your dividend so, and, your, and that's and what they've been paying they've been going in debt right. it is not a revenue in taxes they pay so, they actually are in debt to put a to put a off. to put a fine point on it the reason this argument or this headline has been applied to it to revoke what DeSantis is is actually uh, applying by law because the bill is fucking due and it has been passed over for the past two or three administrations. Yep. The bill is now due and he's forcing them to pay. The way for them to attack it is to attach the LGBTQA, 1A, fucking ZX, whatever crowd into it and make this a social argument instead of a contractual and financial argument. Oh, Disney based on paid. the letter of the law. Yeah, no, no. Disney is not in debt to debtors or creditors. Disney is just not going to conform to the don't say gay bill. If they want to do a Disney movie that includes a first grader that was born, born a woman and, or born a girl, sorry, and 
decides the two-year-old wants to gender into a boy or a trans. I, I don't know. There's the ones that like them both or whatever. Pansexual. They want to be able to make a movie about that. They don't want to be limited on what they do. So therefore, that, they're that, not going to conform. That's not, and, and that's, um, slowly jump in whenever you want to here on this. I, uh, you don't want me to jump in on that because that alone, <laughs> that, that alone to me is, is, is promoting child abuse. And I don't, I don't okay, care so if I offend anybody with that. Again, just like here, here's, sexual talk up to here, the here's, the, here's the point of that is the fact that they're trying to escape what natural law is and what um, natural conformity is. All of us agree that sexualizing a 12-year-old is wrong. However, they want to argue against that, and they want to become their own self-sustaining state within a state to do as they please to progress an agenda that matches what their CEOs and executives actually want to happen which is what has been exposed over the past couple of years and everyone wants to ignore that expose and they want to just focus in on well you can't tell us we can't be gay that's right? the part it's like taking an entire paragraph and taking a three-word sentence out of it and focusing on just that can't be gay nobody said you can't be fucking gay no, absolutely. That's, that's what's nowhere in the, the emotion it's, involved. Whether it, they're, they're you know invoking someone, emotion. Yep, and whether you are someone or know someone or have a family member who is someone who identifies in that way, everyone is somehow connected to somebody who right. that emotionally will affect. So therefore, you get in defensive mode. And you get riled up over this. I mean, the stock has dropped like twenty to fifty dollars a it's share. 41, it's forty-one billion dollars in losses as of Monday last week. Good. Yeah, it's more now. The stock dropped like ten or fifteen dollars a share. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, no, it's, it's not good more. financially. It's not. It's not good for the nation. It's not good for the country on a financial status. Whenever you're dealing with a multi, almost trillion dollar enterprise. It's not good for the value to be lost that much based on a wokeism political statement. That's the problem. Go woke, go broke. I don't care. I, I really don't. I think Disney absolutely deserves it. When you're pushing these types of agendas where you are harming children, don't care. Don't care that your stocks are dry. I hope you drop completely. I hope you go completely and totally and utterly bankrupt. I hope Disney World and Disneyland closes. I do not care. Well, which one's in California? <laughs> Disneyland. 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 They're never going to go broke. They're never going to go out of business. That's why it's called the left coast. However, the battle, the battleground is in Florida. And if we allow it to become this emotional construct, if we allow it to become this, you can't speak out against identifying a child as a sexual object. If you speak out against that in any way, shape, or form, you're a bigot, you're a racist, you're a neo-Nazi, you're a white supremacist. If we allow that, co that conversation to continue without it being shut down, that's where the danger is. And that's what's happening in Florida versus what's going to happen or will never happen in California. Because that entire state, let's just face it, folks, it's a lost fucking cause. They're still making fucking first graders wear masks. Okay? They're still enforcing shop mandates to go to restaurants. And yet they're still allowing homeless people to shit on the sidewalks. Yeah. That's why I say uh, California is a lost cause. You can't even bring them into the conversation. So what's going on with Florida, the, what we cannot allow is the emotional um, response to these everyday adult conversations. I have someone in my family who is either gay or bi or pansexual or they don't fucking know or they're in between surgeries or whatever the case. He's a guy and he wants to swim against fucking women and hang out with his fucking dick hanging out of a swimsuit. Uh, and be in first place uh, trophy, we cannot allow that to happen unmitigated in Florida. 
California is lost. Okay, it, it is what it is. But in Florida, if we allow it to happen, Florida is the worst news. This is the major fucking, I guess a white guy in Florida did it fucking information network. Whenever it comes to the weirdest shit happens in fucking Florida. And if we allow them to go woke, if we don't stand up, if their citizens, their constituents allow this to fucking just pass, man, so that means it's only up to Texas? Are you kidding me? They might as well go ahead and fucking secede and become their own union. Well, that could happen. Well, it's it's uh it's it's actually on their constitutional right as part of being a <laughs> if you're if you're a citizen of Texas, it's part of your constitutional right to secede from the union. It's part of their it's part of their deal. That's uh, uh so I mean so that's what we're left with. Really, if we don't allow, if we don't interject with common sense, if we don't interject and, and remove the emotion, the bullshit from this, the the Disney princess fantasy, all, all of this shit that goes on, the idealism of children, the corruption of children, all of this other stuff, if we don't stop it here, what the fuck is really next? That's the question. That's the problem. Nickelodeon, MTV. Nickelodeon's always had uh, uh, at least innuendo, at least le- not innuendo, I- insinuation of of pedophilia and, and child sexualities. They've always oh, had yeah. those accusations in the background. Yeah, all the way back to the days that you can't do that on television. Say by the bell. Say by the bell. Same thing. Look at all of those child stars. Look at where they are now. They're washed up, ex-drug addicts, fucking child victims. Or they yeah. appeared in Showgirls. Slater? <laughs> except, for, except for Slater. Except for Slater and Mario fucking Lopez. Name anyone else. <laughs> Mario Lopez is Slater. Okay. No, the other <laughs> okay. one. Yeah, no, he died recent. Well, not recently. Yeah, so name anybody else besides him. You know, everybody else has been a right. fucking victim. Of that network, same thing with Disney. I mean, look at look at uh, uh, Jesus, Miley Cyrus. Everything that she had to do, everybody who's come out of the Disney network, everybody who was a child star. Look at how fucked up they are. Britney Spears, all of them. They are all so fucked up. They're but if you own... have that kind of money and that kind of freedom and power. You'd be fucked up too. Yeah, but here's the problem. The people with the money and the power are the ones that are influencing the ones that don't have money and power into living those lifestyles too. Again, you know, you, you look at the parents to allow it. You you, you look at the rise in, in crime, you know, in, in around the world or around the around the country with the rise of hip hop and, and gangster style movies and, and you know, the glorification of, of uh, that type of lifestyle goes hand in hand with the association of the rise in gang violence and the rise in, you know, teenagers going out there and, and rioting and calling it protests and sh- stupid shit like that. Like, it goes hand in hand. So does the influence of, of you know, these, these people that are, you know, promoting pedophilia or, or wokeism. They're, they're being... The shepherds leading the easily brainwashed sheep. You know, my daughter loved Peppa Pig, and she watched some 10-second TikTok that told her in the wallpaper of it that you could see her chained to a bed in the window of the wallpaper, and she Google searched it, and the wallpaper has a little pig in the win- in the window. And now she's afraid to even go to the bathroom by herself in the in the daytime. Like, she is so scared of those 10-second fucking videos. It's not even funny. So, I, I think that kids are very highly influenced within 1 to 10 seconds into what they will believe. <laughs> True. Very much silence. We're getting some dead air. Did we lose Chris? Rudd, are you there? He's 
watching TikTok. <laughs> He's watching Peppa Pig. I guess this is a good st uh, end point now for the uh, Chris Stolich Show podcast. And the reason I say for the Chris Stolich Show podcast is because, surprise, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be a two-parter episode. But part two will not be here with Breaking the Fourth Wall Entertainment or Realm of the Mist uh, Entertainment's podcasting like Chris, the Christopher Stolly Show. We will be playing part two on the Tell It Like It Is podcast with Christopher Rudder and Miss Serenity Stone. We are going to get ready to record that now. I don't know exactly when uh, Chris releases it, but you guys will be able to catch the rest of the conversation there. Until then, guys, thank you very much for joining us. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that smash smash that like button, comment, subscribe, share. Check us out on all the audio podcast formats. And, of course, guys, if you yeah, also on Rumble, these things appear there, too. Go ahead and smash that, that Rumble button. And we will catch you on the next Christopher Stolle podcast. Till then, take it easy. Have a good one.